What's up YouTube and welcome to my channel. If 2020 has been good for anything, it has allowed me the free time to get back into some hobbies from my childhood, including sending out autograph requests to celebrities and athletes through the mail, or TTM for short. So I thought it would be fun to create a series of videos highlighting my top 10 TTMs of 2020. And first up, I'm going to show the top 10 Rawlings official Major League Baseballs that I sent out through the mail with a successful return. All right, coming in at number 10, Mike Cameron, who in my opinion is one of the most underrated players of his era. He's a one-time All-Star, but won the Gold Glove Award three times. He is one of only 22 players in Major League history to have at least 250 home runs and 250 stolen bases. He became only the 20th member of this exclusive 250-250 club. He also became only the 13th player to hit four home runs in one game back in 2002, which is very impressive. And at number nine, we have Hall of Famer Harold Baines. He signed this for a $20 fee. Uh, results on the sports cards forum were kind of erratic, so I just sent $20 to be on the safe side, and he returned this ball along with his Hall of Fame year inscription. Baines played for 22 seasons in the MLB for the Chicago White Sox, Texas Rangers, Oakland Athletics, Baltimore Orioles, and Cleveland Indians. Some say Baines' Hall of Fame induction was a little bit questionable, but there's no doubt he was one of the best clutch hitters in history. All right, number eight, TTM legend Carl Erskine. He's a native Hoosier and all-around great guy. Carl Erskine signed and inscribed this ball for a small fee of $5. He pitched for the Brooklyn and Los Angeles Dodgers from 1948 to 1959, and he included both the inscriptions of his no-hitters against the Cubs and the Giants here on the ball. There were only seven no-hitters pitched during the 1950s, and Carl had two. For 10 years, Erskine had the record for most strikeouts in a World Series game, which was later broken by Sandy Koufax. Erskine had a really impressive career and is great to the collector community. He and I actually went to the same college, although it was a few years apart. All right, number seven, Brett Saberhagen. He signed this World Series 1985 baseball, including his World Series MVP 85 inscription for $25. The donation actually goes to his charity Sabes Wings, so it goes to a good cause. As a subset of my autographed baseball collection, I'm trying to get World Series baseballs signed by the MVP. Brett won the award for the Kansas City Royals in 1985 against the St. Louis Cardinals in what was dubbed the Show Me Series in honor of both teams being from the state of Missouri. Sabre Hagen is also a three-time All-Star, a two-time Cy Young Award winner, and a Gold Glove Award winner. Not to mention he threw a no-hitter in 1991, so very impressive career by Mr. Brett Sabre Hagen. Number six, Mr. Frank Viola. He signed and inscribed this 1987 World Series baseball for a $10 fee. This ball actually had an adventure during its journey with the U.S. Postal Service. The bag was actually ripped in half, but somehow it still made its way to my mailbox. Spun from the rain a little bit, but that's all part of the TTM experience. Viola dominated during this 1987 playoffs and was named MVP for the Minnesota Twins after clinching a Game 7 win over the St. Louis Cardinals. This was the first World Series to feature games played indoors, and it was also the first in which the home team won every game, which was a shocking stat to find out. It's only happened three times in Major League history, which seems like it would happen more often. Viola also pitched in what has been argued as the greatest college baseball game ever played, for St. John's against Yale. He faced off against future Mets teammate Ron Darling in a combined 22-inning pitching duel where both teams were shut out. Darling was masterful pitching a no-hitter going through 11 innings. He gave up the first and only hit of the game to Steve Scaffa, who then stole second, reached third on an error, and finally scored the winning run on a double steal move in the top of the 12th inning. So if you haven't read anything about this game, I highly recommend looking it up. And coming in at number five, Mr. Paul Molitor. Mr. Molitor does charge a little bit more than some of the others on this list at $40 per baseball, which in my opinion is still worth the price for a Hall of Fame baseball player's autograph. He signed this Rawlings official Major League Baseball and also included his Hall of Fame inscription year. During his 21-year career, Molitor played for the Brewers, Blue Jays, and Twins. 
He made seven All-Star appearances and was named World Series MVP for the Toronto Blue Jays in 1993 against the Philadelphia Phillies. In 2004, he was elected to the Hall of Fame in his first year of eligibility, becoming one of the first players enshrined after spending a significant portion of his career as a designated hitter. And at number four, we have Andre Dawson. Mr. Dawson signed and inscribed his Hall of Fame year on this Rawlings official Major League Baseball for only $10. However, he did include a flyer along with my return saying his prices had increased, so I may have just gotten lucky uh, and those prices may have gone up since then. Andre played in the MLB for 21 seasons, most notably with the Montreal Expos and the Chicago Cubs. Dawson was named Rookie of the Year in 1977 and won MVP in 1987. He is one of only five members of the 400 Home Run and 300 Stolen Base Club, along with Barry Bonds, Willie Mays, Alex Rodriguez, and Carlos Beltran, so that is some good company to be in. Dawson was elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame in 2010, his ninth year of eligibility. All right, and at number three, we have Ryan Sandberg. Back-to-back -back Cubby legends, Rhino is another athlete who is great at responding to fans' autograph requests at a reasonable rate. He autographed this Rollins official Major League Baseball for only $10, which he can't beat. Sandberg was one of my favorite players as a kid, and growing up here in the Midwest, I had the good fortune to see him play in person a few times. He is one of the greatest defensive second basemen of all time. He established himself as a perennial All-Star and Gold Glove candidate, making 10 consecutive All-Star appearances and winning 9 consecutive Gold Gloves from 1983 to 1991. He was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2005. All right, number two, we have Wade Boggs. He's a Hall of Fame great and only charges fans a minimal fee for his autograph. I sent him $10 along with this Rollins official Major League Baseball, and he hooked up his autograph along with his Hall of Fame of 05 inscription. Wade played 18 seasons in the MLB, primarily with the Boston Red Sox, although he also played for the rival New York Yankees and Tampa Bay Devil Rays. He and Tony Gwynn were the best hitters of their era, in my opinion. When Boggs got hot, there was simply no stopping him. During his career, he recorded three five-hit games and 59 four-hit games. In 1987, he had a career-high seven RBI game against the Orioles in a 14-3 victory at Fenway. In 2015, Boggs guest starred in the season 10 premiere of one of my favorite shows, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. In this episode, the characters in the show try to drink more than 70 beers on a cross-country flight. They were emulating a feat Boggs once allegedly accomplished during his career, and Charlie keeps revering to Wade as if he's dead, and D thinks they were talking about Boss Hog the whole time from Dukes of Hazard. so it's absolutely hilarious. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend you check it out. Number one is Mr. Brooks Robinson. He signed one of one, including his inscription of his Hall of Fame year, for only $10. Supposedly he used to charge more, so I'm not sure if he lowered his rate, or if that rate will go back up eventually. At the time of sending this out, the most recent successful posts on all the sports card forums had been sending $10 donations. So that's what I did, and I had success with that as well. Brooks played all 23 seasons for the Baltimore Orioles, which still stands as the record for the most seasons played with one team, tied with Carl Yastrzemski. Very impressive. He was nicknamed the human vacuum cleaner because of his defensive skills, widely considered the greatest defensive third baseman of all time. He won 16 straight Gold Glove awards and was elected into the Hall of Fame in 1983. In 2015, Robinson was selected as one of the Orioles franchise four, recognizing the four greatest players in Orioles history, along with Jim Palmer, Frank Robinson, and Cal Ripken Jr. All right, well, that does it for this 2020 top 10 list of Rawlings' official Major League Baseball autographs. I have a few more categories in mind for these top 10 videos, so be on the lookout for that. Feel free to leave any thoughts in the comment section below. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already, and if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. All right, hope you're doing well. Happy holidays. Take care.